Hey guys, Dov here, and today I'm back with some more Total War Warhammer 2 multiplayer action. We're here today with Archeon, the ever-chosen Lord of the End Times, going to be facing off against Imric, Lord of the Dragons. So, let's get to it. Archeon leading the way, he's got an exalted hero a champion alongside him, some Chaos Knights, has his retinue sword and shield with the power swords, definitely very strong. In this, uh, in this matchup, and in a number of matchups, uh, we've also got some Marauder Horsemen throwing axes, a bunch of Chaos Marauders, some shielded Chaos Warriors as well. Nice, uh, cost-effective defensive infantry unit. We've got two Chaos Chariots to be anti-infantry, a Deathcaster. As for Imric's forces, he's got two Swordmasters here, a White Lions, a whole bunch of Lothurn Seaguard, Bolt Thrower, a uh, Fire Mage, and a Life Mage, and of course, Imric himself on horseback, or no, actually on foot. Very interesting. I don't know if I've ever seen Imric on foot before, but he holds his lance like a halberd, and yeah, he's here. Interesting. <laughs> Archeon going to be charging in the front line, and here comes the Exalted Hero as well. These Power Swords going to get in. But once the Bracing bonus is broken from the Exalted Hero, they can come in and actually take advantage of their charge bonus. Author and Seaguard don't do that much uh, armor-piercing damage, and also, you know, 50 melee defense on the Chaos Knights is very, very good, so it's a pretty safe engagement for me. I'm gonna swing these Marauder Horsemen out wide and promptly forget about them, because, you know, that's just how we roll am amongst these parts. And, uh, yeah, the melee engagement for Chaos getting underway. Piercing Bolts of Burning was a little bit misplaced there. I could have potentially absolutely wrecked this unit of Chaos Knights, um, but, yeah, not quite in the right positioning. And I'm able to mostly avoid that damage there. Could have been potentially devastating, but the Swordmasters are coming to take out my Chaos Warriors. Definitely a good target for them. Uh, rushing in the side here. I have been able to take out the Bolt Thrower, mostly through Spirit Leech, actually. There was only one unit model remaining there, but uh, Marauders just kind of fighting all across the board. The one thing here is there's not anything to account for the Chariots uh, in terms of mass. It's all, an all-infantry force, right? Like, there's literally no large units here, no mass units whatsoever. So the chariots both mostly have free reign. I mean, I am facing a lot of armor-piercing or anti-large units, alternately. Um, so if I miss micro them, they could take a lot of damage. Like, this one already has taken quite a bit of HP damage, but if I keep them moving and keep microing them well, which is uh, asking a lot of me sometimes, I think they will do well. We'll see. As it is right now, the characters are getting in a little bit of a pitched fight here. We've got the Exalted Hero and Archeon fighting on the hill. We've got some supporting Lothurn Seaguard. The Chaos Knights are kind of scattered amongst these various engagements here, having been kind of pathed through a few of them. Uh, the Swordmasters of Hoeth, though, absolutely cleaning up those Chaos Warriors. Chaos Warriors just trading so horribly here, all things considered. Um, but really all I need the Chaos Warriors to do is just buy me enough time to get the damage done with the Chariots, right? I mean, they don't have armor piercing. They have decent enough stats, but I wouldn't expect them to win against Swordmasters. Swordmasters are very much a unit that's designed to counter them, but as long as they can hold en for enough time to allow the other units to get the work done, that's kind of the idea here. Uh, Spearman against Chaos Marauder is also a very nice engagement for me. But having uh, dealt with a lot of the Lothurn Sea Guard, you know, we've got Hounds chasing some off here. Uh, Caster's been dealt with, and we've got a Duel of the Fates. I'm sure... Imric is wishing he'd brought his dragon prince horse at this point. But he wasn't get compl getting bowled over by uh, by Archeon. Does he actually have charge defense with this thing? Like, does it actually count as a halberd? No. Uh, he does not have charge defense. What's his charge bonus? Just curious. 45. That's uh, kind of interesting. Uh, pretty decent for uh, Halberd Infantry Lord. But, unfortunately, again, he's going to get continuously knocked around by Archeon. If he can stand up and get a few hits... It would be good. I mean, obviously, that anti-large armor-piercing damage has potential. It's a nice hit in there. And Archeon, I mean, doesn't have too much HP. has a pretty good amount of HP. The standard die has been alternating with, uh, uh, what is it? Cascading Fire Cloak in order to juice up his melee defense. But yeah, I don't want to take a fight against two characters uh, on one, especially with that Lord of the Dragons active. So I'm going to pull Archeon away there momentarily. We try and clean up the rest of these forces here. The Swordmasters and uh, White Lions are still fighting. They've been uh, mostly dealt with at this point. My Chariots are almost done, though. Three models here, two models there, and very low on HP. So, uh, yeah, I definitely want to try and 
finish off these last last few Lothran Seaguard if I can with them. Um, not charging in the front would be preferable, so I'm going to kind of path them around the side here, try and hit these very tattered units, and then keep them on the move as much as possible. That's what you want to do with chariots, is just keep that charge bonus active. Keep, uh, you know, ping-ponging between different units, especially infantry, obviously. Chaos chariots used to be a unit that I would bring a lot. I honestly don't play Chaos as much as I used to, but back in Game 1 especially, I had a, a very patented build against Empire, Wood Elves, and a few others that I had a lot of success with. With uh, Big Bird, I seem to remember, and I know there were some chariots involved, and a lot of Marauder Horsemen. It was something like a Big Bird, Sirtha Ek, something. I don't know. But uh, yeah, well played Rider of Rohan. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed that one. It's a pretty interesting battle. I mean, the, the Swordmasters are a risky play there. It did end up getting a lot of kills, though, and uh, some XP chevrons as well. I think both of them got XP chevrons there, at least one. So yeah, the Chaos Knights, though, 103 kills XP chevron for them. Again, the Chaos Chariots, nothing really to account for them. Um, so they were able to roll over quite a few of the High Elves there. Some of these Chaos Warriors did okay, like 54 kills, at, and they had one to begin with, so they must have gained one more at some point. Uh, that's decent, but the other two just getting absolutely stomped by these Swordmasters. Uh, Exa Exalted Hero took some damage, but, you know, able to survive in the late game. Archeon, too, ended up actually getting punched pretty hard by Emric there. I almost wonder if Emric would have been on horseback if that duel would have turned out a bit differently. I do think Emric could probably win that with his debuffs. We'll have a look in just a minute. Um, but... Yeah, it's, a, it's an interesting one, for sure. Um, Archaon is a very strong character, but I didn't take Kindle Flame there. I, normally, I think Kindle Flame is something you almost always want to have, but I just didn't take any fire damage whatsoever. Obviously, you know, High Elves have a good amount of fire resistance. Imric himself, likewise, uh, I think he has really high fire resistance. We can have a look here. Just uh, comparing these two. So, Imric... Yep, he does have that fire resistance, 45%, so Archeon, even though his sword is on fire, it only does magic damage. Um, so it doesn't, doesn't have any fire interactions, so, you know, don't bring Flaming Sword of Ruin, and just don't even bother with Kindle Flame, I would say, against the High Elves. Um, Fireball can be pretty decent, but here I wanted to make him as cheap as possible, so I just took the support abilities. That Immune to Psychology can be pretty important against Star Dragons, potentially. Slayer of Kings is... Pretty good, it makes him an absolute beast for a short amount of time, but it is pretty expensive uh, for what you get for it. It does have to be recharged in melee, and 120 second recharge time means you're only really going to get probably one of these in most battles. Um, but uh, yeah, I don't know that I would always take that, but certainly the immune psychology and the, the fire cloak and, of course, standard die, very important as well. Um... Now, let's just kind of compare him in that kit to Imric on horseback. Um, you definitely want Lord of Dragons, Dragonhorn, obviously, and the Star Lance as well. So, they're pretty comparable in terms of cost, keeping in mind that Archeon is a caster and Lord in one. Um, but just looking at the combat stats here, if we select Archeon's card, Archeon has about 1,500 HP on Imric, which will make a huge difference. Um, HP is one of the biggest factors, honestly. Uh, Archeon also has more armor. And slightly better stats baseline, that's not accounting for Martial Mastery though. Uh, 50 more weapon strength, they both have 90 charge bonus, 78 speed, so honestly very comparable in many ways. Uh, and the anti-large bonus for Imric is 30, so that will equalize the weapon strength somewhat, but Archeon still comes out on top. Although with that 30, that does mean 90 melee attack if Archeon's mounted right. And <laughs> that's... That's quite a bit, not even factoring in Martial Mastery. That would be, what, 98 melee attack on hit, and uh, he's got 72 melee defense baseline as well from that when he's at full HP. So, Emrek probably could stand. I think it would come down to RNG, honestly. That f extra HP might make the difference. I think that would make it a little bit tough, but the fact that um, you have, likewise, abilities to help counter each other. Uh, this Lord of Dragons can help counter the timing push of, like, Cascading Fire Cloak and Standard Die. Um, and Dragonhorn as well, same thing. Star Lance, if you get some Fire Synergy here, you can potentially juice up that weapon strength quite a bit. And obviously, while that flammable is active, then just straight up, you're going to be getting a 22% damage, resist, uh, damage buff as is, so... It's an interesting comparison, definitely. Um, for that build, though, I didn't really highlight it too much, but those mages were pretty heavily equipped. Personally, I think that um, 
I, I, I would probably say it's worth it to maybe take a little bit of a lighter loadout on the mages. I definitely think the fire synergy is, is good. And I see taking them unmounted. Kindle Flame I would absolutely keep in this case. Um, and then, honestly, I might just take Cascading Fire Cloak. Uh, we can look at potentially another spell as well in a moment. But then a, with the Life Mage, probably cut Life Bloom. You could also take her on foot. Again, both of these are going to be somewhat vulnerable on foot. But rather than spending on on horses, I you know, I kind of get... Going the cheaper route, I'd probably say Shield of Thorns and Regrowth are going to be pretty solid here. And then I actually don't totally hate the pick of the Swordmasters. I'd probably take one Swordmaster and then the Pure Main Company are important here. They're a nice great weapon infantry, great stats, but that Armor Sundering is very good against Warriors of Chaos. It'll help archers perform a little bit more efficiently. Speaking of which, uh, since we're going with the Fire Synergy here, I'd probably take Talons of Torcoleta for that additional flammable effect. And uh, they also have decent enough stats with this Martial Mastery active. Uh, plus 8 melee attack, plus 12 melee defense. And the fire resistance actually can come in handy if they decide to bring Burning Head. Um, then these guys are more resistant to that. Almost completely resistant to it, actually. Um, but yeah, they, I think they would be a good option for archers. And then I'd go a little bit lighter on the archer line. Just probably two Lothurn Seaguard to protect, protect the flanks. And then... Uh, Couple spearmen, definitely uh, solid options. Silver helms here would provide a little bit of mass and kind of counter punch. And they also synergize well with the dragon horn. Um, just kind of having some mass to account for chariots, and also you know just to charge down marauders like rear charging chaos warriors and stuff like that. That way you got your bases covered there. And then from for the rest you can kind of spend however you will. You know war lions could potentially be good here if you have the micro for them. You could go wider with cavalry and take a bunch of reavers as well. These guys will tr uh, charge any light chaos units, you know, any marauders, horsemen, hounds, anything like that uh, very well. And even in, the, in a pinch can be used against chaos warriors, although they're not going to do quite as much there. Um, you could, I guess, take a war lion chariot. Uh, these are going to be pretty solid in this matchup. Speaking of chariots, um, yeah, this one, anti-infantry armor piercing, very good against warriors of chaos. Um... Although with the anti-infantry spend on the Swordmasters of Hoeth, maybe you want to, again, go with more anti-large or something. Uh, Imric is a pretty decent anti-large, but you also don't have any terror in this build. And speaking of fire synergy, you can absolutely slot in a Flamesfire Phoenix. You do even have just about enough for an Arcane Phoenix, which could potentially be really good here. The Sun Dragon, I don't know that it's necessarily worth the spend to bring here. These are relatively squishy. You might have to try and uh, cut some other costs to bring an upgraded dragon, but... Yeah, if we think about this a little bit here, maybe I would cut these shields for the Silver Helms to get, from one of the Silver Helms, to get the Arcane Phoenix. That's one that I don't have to dedicate uh, too much resources to protecting. You know, it has the self-heal, has good physical resistance and fire resistance. Uh, you can use the Ember Storm to go after lighter infantry or even the heavy infantry in a pinch. And uh, yeah, it has good single target weapon strength and charge bonus. Kind of expensive, but it also does give you that terror option. Um, so yeah. And yeah, what do we have? Two silver helms like this? Something like that actually. Looks like we would have to cut the shields from both, which is a little bit feels bad, but at the same time, yeah, they're still there to provide the mass and shock damage and everything else. So, yeah. It's an interesting one. Um, the Warriors of Chaos, definitely the, the new High Elf tools help them in this matchup. I still think it's pretty even. Need, still need to play around with it a little bit and see, but uh, previously it was kind of in Chaos favor to a degree. Um, but I think now with some of the new tools Isles have, certainly can get it done. But anyway, very well played there. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. If you do like this sort of content, be sure to like, subscribe, hit that bell notification button. So every time I upload a new video, you'll be notified. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you next time.